Hey everyone, this is SMK, but you can always just call me Steven, and welcome to literally a straightforward guide to shiny hunting for every shiny hunting method that is available in Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. I will cover each shiny hunting method as well as how to get the shiny charm in Pokemon Sword and Shield. The point of this video is to make things simple and easy to understand so you can spend less time worrying about things and just actually just play the game and shiny hunt for whatever shiny Pokemon you're trying to obtain. There are timestamps on screen and also in the description for each shiny hunting method I'm covering in this video. So without further ado, let us talk about how to shiny hunt in Pokemon Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. All right, everyone, before we actually talk about the shiny hunting methods, I at least want to give you guys a basic understanding of Pokemon to bring and items to have in your Pokemon Sword or Shield game uh, to make your shiny hunting experience a better one and a more planned out one instead of just, you know, winging it and just, you know, YOLO, whatever. So, Gallade is really good to bring because of False Swipe and Hypnosis. If you don't know, False Swipe brings a Pokemon's HP all the way down to 1, and then obviously Hypnosis, you can put it to sleep, which makes it, you know, a lot easier to catch. So False Swipe on just any Pokemon that can learn False Swipe is super useful. It's just Gallade is kind of a, you know, two-for-one package. Uh, Butterfree is probably the more common one you're going to find before Gallade, but again, Gallade's in the wild area. It's not hard to find. Um, but Butterfree is really great for Sleep Powder and Stun Spore. Make sure it has the ability Compound Eyes because that will increase the accuracy of both Stun Spore and Sleep Powder. Uh, Pangoro, you need the ability Scrappy so you can use False Swipe on Ghost-type Pokemon. Other than that, just Pangoro is a great Pokemon for using False Swipe. Chandelure, or literally any Pokemon that has Flame Body or I believe Steam Engine is the other one, uh, is good for hatching Pokemon eggs faster. So I just personally just use a chandelure and of course obviously if you are breeding pokemon and you're wanting to get shinies you're gonna need probably a foreign ditto uh, obviously mine is japanese it doesn't matter what language it is it just cannot be english so i play my game in english the ditto that uh, i'm breeding with needs to be a different language in order for the Masuda method effect to work to give you the better shiny odds. We'll talk more about that later when it comes to the breeding section. Uh, if you ever need a Japanese ditto, I personally go out of my way and I play the game in Japanese so I can do raid battles with myself just to catch more Japanese dittos uh, and I give them away. Uh, from time to time on my live streams over at my Twitch channel. So link down below for that. That is what you're, where you'll see me shiny hunt and just talk about Pokemon or just playing video games in general. But if you need a ditto, check out the live streams. Always check. Just you'll, you'll know when I'm giving them away. You'll see it on Twitter. You'll see it on the YouTube feed. Like you'll see it somewhere on any of my social medias. I make it very well known when I have dittos and when I'm giving them away. Uh, no, I do not do requests on my YouTube videos, so don't leave me a comment asking for a Japanese ditto. That's, that's not how I do it. It's so much easier just to do it live when I'm streaming because I'm there, I'm ready, I have dittos. Anyways, so those are the Pokemon you should probably think about having on your team before you start shiny hunting. Uh, these are all the shinies I've gotten from the KO method. These are a couple from raids, and these are the ones I've gotten from breeding. So just to give you an idea of like my shiny hunting success. So there's that. And then we go to the items again i'm going to make a follow-up video that really deep dive into like literally every useful pokemon every useful ability items everything you'd probably want to know for shiny hunting but i just don't want to claim it all in one video because just talking about each shiny hunting method is enough so i'll have a separate video so subscribe to the channel turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on the part two of the shiny hunting tutorial uh, Pokeballs you should always have. Ultra Balls, Repeat Balls, Quick Balls, Dusk Balls. You should always have some. Dusk Balls, Repeat Balls, Ultra Balls, you're pretty much going to use those for raid battles a lot. Uh, quick Balls is more or less for random encounters, and then just whatever Pokeballs you want to use, use them, right? But you typically want these four in your inventory at all times. Obviously, you know, bring potions, full restores, revive, stuff like that, just in case your Pokemon faint while trying to catch a shiny. It's always good to be prepared. Uh, other things you should probably have if you want them, you don't need them, is just the catching charm, the oval charm, and the shiny charm. Uh, I will tell you guys how to get the shiny charm because I have a clip of it, but the other two uh, I will just show you guys in a follow-up video because like, I'm trying to just cram all the shiny hunting methods in this video. So all the extra stuff of like how to get the catching charm, oval charm, just all these important other optional things 
we will talk about in a future video. Here is a list of all the Pokemon that are shiny locked at certain points in the game or they're 100% shiny locked. So some of these are not 100%, but some of these are. Uh, yes, there do exist shiny locks in Sword and Shield. I don't understand why they keep doing this. I just, whatever the reasoning is, I still think it's silly. Uh, but regardless, it's it's still a thing, regardless of how I personally feel about it. Uh, the Pokemon that you cannot get at first, but you can get shiny later, would be Grookey, Scorbunny, Sobble, Charmander, Slowpoke. If you don't know, Glorian Slowpoke, it's a free update. Update your game. Um, and Toxel. All those Pokemon, at first, you cannot get them shiny, but you can put them in the daycare. You can breed for them to be shiny literally everything else on that list is 100 shiny locked so you cannot get the legendaries you can't get type null you can't get gigantamax eevee or pikachu those are 100 shiny locked but grookey score bunny sobble charmander slowpoke and toxel those are the exception because of pokemon breeding okay you got it still with me i know there's a lot of information i know okay first up on the list is full odds shiny hunting let us begin Full odd shiny hunting, it's the longest method probably on this list, and it's the most, I guess, rewarding for some people, but also the most annoying one. I feel like at times, again, everyone has a preference, okay? I'm not dismissing it, I'm just saying. This will take you the longest, but for some people, it's amazing. For some people, they hate it, So, but we still gotta talk about it. So, full odd shiny hunting, how it works in this game. So there is a thing with the KO method. We'll talk about that. You know, it'll, it'll all make sense. So for the example here is Impidimp, right? The Pokedex says we have battled Impidimp two times, which means I've either KO'd it in battle or I have caught it. The only way that number goes up is if you, again, KO or catch it. That's it. If I encounter an Impidimp and I run away, it will not go up, okay? Why this is important, we'll talk about just that in, that in a second. So let me, on the Impidimps right here, and they just ran away. Nope. Wait for it. Perfect. Here we have an impotent, right? It's not shiny. Shocker. Wow. So just to show off, you know how false swipe is useful. Here, let me just let me just do a live demonstration while recording. So false swipe brings it down to one HP. Great, right? This would make things a lot easier, right? And if we use hypnosis, let's see if it actually just puts it to sleep first turn. Does it do it? It fell asleep. Great. Awesome. But we're not catching it. But this would be the prime situation of how to catch a shiny, right? So we're just going to run away. I'm doing this as in a live demonstration format because I feel like it's important to actually show the actual process versus just doing super fast cuts. I, I don't like doing that. I'd rather just give you the actual example. So let's go back to our Pokedex. So I ran away from that Impidimp, right? You would think that would increase your, you know, numbers of battles, right? No. If you run away, it will never increase the number battled. It only goes up when you KO or when you catch it. That's it. So for your full odds hunters out there, this is what you would do. Um, the exception to the rule is if you know about the KO method, once that number is 50 or higher, that's when is, that's when you start getting like the boosted shiny odds. So if Impidimp was over 50, then it's not full odds anymore. Also, on top of the fact, if you have a shiny charm at any point in your game, it, you're never going to full odds shiny hunt because you already have that multiplier. So full odds shiny hunting is no multipliers, no additions to making getting shinies either uh, easier. Sorry, It's just full odds. It's just you're in it for the long haul. Okay, so that's it. That's all you got to do. You just encounter Pokemon and you run away. Same thing if they're just the exclamation mark in the grass. You would just see it pop up. You would encounter a Pokemon. And you just run away. So this is full odds hunting when it comes to encounters. Um, I will talk about full odds breeding later, but why would you want to do that? But some people do. I just wouldn't I personally I just couldn't but this is full odds hunting at its finest you're literally just gonna sit in a spot and you're just gonna encounter things and then just run away until something is shiny that's it so if you're into full odds hunting um, have fun because that's literally what it is I mean that's just it's it's just that simple it's that easy to understand so yeah that's full odds hunting I know dude they keep changing it No! Wow! 
<laughs> you have gotta be shitting me. Bro, this is twice. This is twice in one stream. Full eyes grubbin. What the? Like after 50 of either KOs or catches. And there, there's no way I've done 50 since the first one. It's at nine. Like, this is still full odds. There's no shiny charm. I will prove, I will, like, this time I will show it. I, I mentioned it the first time. Go to my bags, go to key items. There's no shiny charm. It's, it's nowhere to be found. I only have three gym badges. Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> So this really isn't a shiny hunting method per se. It's just if you're going for a specific Pokemon that only spawns once a day, this is what you would have to do. This is typically for Pokemon that are overworld uh, encounters that only spawn once. So if I move forward, I will uh, see a Corviknight spawn right in front of me. So if I want to shiny hunt it, I, what I need to do is save the game before I encounter it before it shows up in the overworld, right? Before it shows up in the wild area. So, like, it's not here yet, right? We move forward. There's a Corviknight. So, at that point, once it shows up, that is when the game is generating a Corviknight, which means this is when the shiny uh, roll is happening, basically. This is when the shiny is generated, right? So, uh, since this is not shiny, what you need to do is you just close your game. And then you just restart it. And then you just keep doing this until you get the shiny you want. Uh, is this something everyone should do? No, but if you're looking for a specific Pokemon uh, that only shows up once a day, uh, this would be the way to go about it. Obviously, if you want to use exploits and change the days, whatever, that's up to you. Uh, I'm showing you guys every single shiny hunting method that's legit with no exploits. So... To do this legit, you would obviously have to, you know, shiny hunt on a day for that Pokemon. Because Carving Knight is always here, where other Pokemon, they change per the day. Uh, but this is what you would need to do in order to find a shiny that only spawns once a day. So you'd have to pretty much save before it shows up, encounter it, see if it's shiny or not. Since it's not, you rinse, you repeat, you keep doing this until you get the shiny. It's pretty straightforward. Um... But again, I like doing these live demonstrations that actually show you guys like how it all works and all that fun jazz. Again, full odds is one out of 4,096. Full odds shiny hunting is where there is absolutely no multipliers to getting your shiny. It is just the full odds, right? That is what full odds hunting is. I, I need to really emphasize on that. So if you have a shiny charm like myself, what I'm doing right here is random encounters with a shiny charm which means my shiny odds right now is one out of 1365 chance that th this corving knight that's on screen could be shiny if i did not have a shiny charm well then it's full odds which is one out of 4096 i know it's a lot of information but i need to always mention just the full odds shiny hunting aspect of things and then what it would be like for shiny charm shiny hunting right so clearly it's still not shiny whatever this is just a demonstration to show you uh, an example so if you like this type of method try it out see if you you know get whatever shiny you're trying to get but just note that if you're trying to go for pokemon that change per the day you would have to wait until that day of the week for that pokemon to show up without using exploits without changing your switch's date if you purposely want to change your switch's internal date to get the, whatever pokemon again that is up to you I'm showing you guys the legit way to shiny hunt for everything. So now we're done with that. Let's move on to the next one. Fossil shiny hunting. This is how you would get all the fossil Pokemon shiny in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Uh, just note that no matter what you do, uh, fossil Pokemon are considered gifts and they are always full odds. So going into a fossil shiny hunt is always full odds. So regardless of the fact that I personally have a shiny charm, that's not helping. It's always going to be 1 out of 4,096. So here is what you need to do for prep-wise to get yourself started for fossil hunting. So obviously in the wild area, this is the uh, Pokemon Nursery. So just even though I'm there, I'm just showing you guys anyway. So go from the Nursery. What you want to do is you want to go over here. And hey, look, it's the Mining Bros. You always want to talk to the guy on the left. This is the guy that will give you fossils. 
Um, depending on which version of sword or shield you're playing is which versions of fossils you're more likely to get. So I already have fossils on this particular game. And as you can clearly see, I have more dino and bird versus drake and fish. So if you're playing uh, Pokemon sword, you're going to get more dino and bird. If you're playing Pokemon shield, you're going to get more drake and fish. You can all you can get all the fossils all in one game. It's just it'll take longer to get drake and fish when you're playing sword. And if you're playing shield, it's going to be hard to get dino and bird. But either way, does not matter which version you're playing, you can always get all four of them. It's it's that's it. You literally can get all of them. It's just a super long time process. So the only way if you want to to make this faster because when you do the mining bros you already know it's a bunch of pressing the a button right right let me show you guys one example of how to make this 100 percent easier and actually it's more afk so let's uh let me show you this is not required this is just going to make you have less of a headache when it comes to getting the fossils and then also restoring the fossils to get the fossil pokemon so i have here a hori pad nintendo switch controller this is officially licensed from nintendo and it's sold for about like 20 dollars uh, usd so what the important feature of this controller if you haven't seen this already um, is it has a turbo button so when you macro the button it will automatically like keep pressing the a button for you without you having to do anything so let's do a live demonstration okay here's the turbo button right here in the middle okay Here's the A button. So we do turbo button, turbo button. And what's gonna happen is I have now macroed the controller to nonstop press the A button, which is going to help me get all the fossils from the mining bros, right? Pretty, pretty neat. This is a wired controller, by the way. So you have to plug it into your switch um, that is docked, so but yeah, this is this is what we're doing. It's pretty straightforward. So personally, I would probably recommend uh, you guys get, and then all you have to do is turn it off. You just, bam, see it stopped, right? So I would personally recommend uh, that you guys get about like 50,000 to 100,000 watts. Um, if you have, you know, a, a, the Hori Pad Turbo Controller, it makes it just it, well worth your time. Um, just in general, like just get enough fossils for what you want, right? That's like the rule of thumb. But if you have this controller, again, this is you're spending more money on this game in the sense to do, you know, a couple Pokemon that are fossils that are shiny, right? But this will help. This will make it better, right? This is worth your time. And also, it's just an extra switch controller you have. So once you have fossils, right? Now we need to go restore them so we can go get fossil Pokemon, right? So you got to go all the way up here. To route six you gotta fly there or just go there if you haven't been there yet and you need to restore your fossils so really quick let us uh, move to a different box really quick again we're just doing this all live so you guys have no questions about anything I know there's just so much stuff in my Pokemon box so let's just move some stuff around real quick here these are like Pokemon that I'm going to be doing for breeding projects and stuff. And there's just all kinds, there's all kinds of stuff in here. Okay. So here empty box. Cool. So if I were to do this like by hand manually by just nonstop pressing the a button, right? So, so what you need to do for fossil hunting, regardless if you have this controller or not, right? So you would want to get right in front of uh, the lady. You would save your game. Very important. Save before you do any fossil hunting. Always save, okay? You talk to her, careless, right? Funny, right? So yes, you would, you would literally just press the A button. You just, you would just pick whatever fossils, whatever combination you are trying to get. This is me just tapping the A button, getting a fossil, tapping, tapping, tapping. Now we have Dracozolt, right? Ta-da, we did it. And that's it. So then if you were to you know, oh, so say you only had one of them, right? You would just, you know, close your game, start it right back up. Ta-da! That's it. That's all you would need to do for fossil hunting. So it doesn't matter how many fossils you have getting going into this. It just matters that you save your game before you restore them. Because if you don't get a shiny, 
you just reset, you keep trying. The benefit of having this freaking controller is let me show you, because if you've not seen a live stream of me doing this, we're gonna show you in this video to just make your mind go poof. Um, this is more or less only useful for just like all of the fossils. If you want a particular fossil, uh, then you're gonna have to delete the ones out of your inventory that you don't want. So if it, you just have to get rid of the ones you don't want, if you want a specific Pokemon it's a fossil to be shiny personally for me i don't care which one shows up i'm still looking for my stupid shiny um but uh, we're over like i think six thousand soft resets even with this controller and still nothing um but this is what you'd have to do it's pretty straightforward um but let me just show you how amazing this controller is so again right in front of her save my game i'm just really emphasizing the whole save always save okay so what we're gonna do Turbo button, A button. Turbo button, do it again. So there's a, you won't see this because I have a green screen, but there's a button right here. It's an, it's a green LED light and it's gonna be flickering like, like nonstop. It's gonna be basically flashing. So again, I'm not pressing anything. I've macroed the controller to nonstop press the A button and that's all it's gonna do. Do you see how nice this is? This is worth the $20 investment if you're trying to get all the shinies as, as simple and easy as possible. Do you consider this cheating or whatever? It's up to you, but I mean, I'm paying more money just to shiny hunt. So I mean, and it's an officially licensed product, so that's more or less up to your interpretation of what you think would be legit or not legit, but this is literally something extra that is not required, but it makes my my thumb a lot happier and it makes the uh, longevity of my controllers a lot happier because I'm not having to spam the A button. I literally press a few button presses and then it's just doing it. So yeah, that is up for you guys to debate on whether you think it's, you know, if you think it's legit or not, but this just makes your shiny hunting experience so much easier and it preserves your controllers so i mean any way that you can you know make this process easier i would always suggest it but again it is not required because you can literally just sit here and just spam the a button or just you know do whatever and then just just keep spamming the a button obviously you wouldn't be spamming like this but you would just be sitting here just Sitting here waiting, 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 waiting. Ta-da! We have a new fossil, right? So, that's it. That's all you need to do for fossil hunting. Again, your shiny odds is 1 out of 4,096. You don't need a certain amount of fossils to do it. It is whatever you, you want to get beforehand. So, again, if you want to know where to buy this thing, it's on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, but I, I have two of them for both of my Switches, and I got it on Amazon um the black version is uh is the cheapest one the red and blue one are more expensive but it's you're gonna spend anywhere from like 18 dollars to like 24 uh usd uh, dollars so yeah if you're interested in that uh that is a thing let us move on to the next shiny hunting method, which is, I would say, by far the most controversial one, I would say, for this generation of Pokemon, the KO method. Let us begin. Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon did, and technically Let's Go's remake in some aspects. To be fair, it was $20 more, so it's easier for her to make more money. That's also true. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I'd have to look at the units sold to compare the two because I haven't looked at it in a while but either way like let's go like money's money you know what I mean regardless if it costs more it's like they still made their money gen 6 is okay get out of here all right can we can guys can we all agree a uh, time to unmod screaming rallet time to time to fucking unmod this piece of shit <laughs> trying to tell me that gen 6 is okay it's done it's done i probably broke my controller we're good 
Welcome to the KO method. If you have ever played Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, this idea and shiny hunting method should be kind of similar to Dexnav. Uh, the only difference is that uh, when you have the best shiny odds for this method, it only works 3% of the time. I know, it's you're gonna be like, what? What do you mean? So I don't know if Pokemon did this in, uh, on purpose or whatever, but either way, the method works. It's just not as maybe fast as you would like it compared to Dexnav. But in my personal opinion, uh, it's more of just like uh, it rewards you for KOing or catching Pokemon. And then your game is forever going to have better shiny odds for that particular Pokemon. So for this example, I have a Zigzagoon. I have KO'd it 781 times. The goal is to, to have the best situation for this method is you want to have number battled be over 500 so 500 is the magic number at 500 you could just stop KOing zigzagoons and just run away right if you want your shiny odds to be better well then you would have to KO zigzagoon 500 times or catch it but realistically you're gonna just KO it it's much easier and much faster so just KO 500 zigzagoons you do not need to do this all in one sitting it's just the overall number needs to be over 500 for it to uh, take effect and then if you have the shiny charm well that by default is going to always increase everything in your game to be shiny so just get a pokemon you want over 500 and then just keep encountering that pokemon because it has the best shiny odds if you have a shiny charm well then you're you're in good luck here is a table of the progression of how you get the boosted encounters this takes effect after you have ko'd 50 pokemon at 100 200 300 and 500 but the simplistic version of this just get a pokemon over 500 ko's and then have a shiny charm and you will always have the best odds for that particular pokemon in my personal opinion, you should KO everything because eventually you may want to shiny hunt a, a particular Pokemon and it just makes the whole KOing 500 Pokemon less tedious if you gradually do it over time instead of just focusing on Zigzagoon. So let's do a live demonstration just to show you. So right now, I have the best shiny odds for Zigzagoon. I've already found a shiny Zigzagoon. You can see that if you've seen it on my youtube channel great i'm already showing you've probably already seen it in the video or i'll put it up right now either way there has been proof that i have found it unlike the fossil shiny which i'm still working on but i digress so hey look there is a zigzagoon sweet so this zigzagoon has the best shiny odds this zigzagoon had a chance of one out of 512 of being shiny but according to how the game works um it's a 3% chance on top of that 1 out of 512 chance. So basically, your best shiny odds for the KO method only works 3% of the time. Yeah, I know. It's, there's just so much to talk about, but this is the method. You just encounter the Pokemon you want, you KO it, that's it. What I personally will tell you is do not ever care about the shiny odds of anything of any method we talk about in this video because I can't tell you how many people say this is a terrible method when all I ever heard from my time starting shiny hunting in generation 6 is when I basically started shiny hunting pretty regularly up till this very day and in the future is oh this method's bad it's not fun if you want to shiny hunt you're gonna do it anyway if you don't want to do it just go breed or do full odds like you're not required to do this method i just feel like if you want a shiny hunt if you want a, a shiny you're gonna put the work in regardless so just shiny hunt <laughs> like I, just, I it doesn't bother me that people are upset about the whole three percent of this method of it working but like i've personally gotten shinies super quick with this method and sometimes not so much but you don't know until you do it type deal thing so just keep doing it and then yeah <laughs> like i don't know what else to say that's this is the simplistic version you just you do this you just ko everything 
until you find a shiny. Um, so obviously, if I went over here and I just KO'd Glossifer, like it would just be just another KO, right? I probably said its name wrong. I don't care. <laughs> I mispronounce Pokemon names on the daily. Welcome to my content. This this has not changed in the many years I've done this. So yes, but yeah, this is all you need to do. Just run around. KO whatever Pokemon you want to KO and gradually but surely increase the you know number of battles for the Pokemon you want to find so again the golden shiny odds for this method 500 KOs for that particular Pokemon and have shiny charm and then you're good then it's just a waiting game it, that's where you're in it for the long haul Again, if, since I KO'd a couple of Zigzagoons, now the number battled is at 784. So again, you have to KO or catch it for the number to go up. If you go back previously in the video, like I said, for full odds, if um, a Pokemon is at... See, my Yamper's over 500. Yamper is good. Your mask. That, that would be a full odd Shiny Hunt. But I have Shiny Charm, so that wouldn't count. But if I did not have a Shiny Charm, and I was just doing random encounters for your mask that would be full odds hunting because the boosted encounters do not start until 50 or more. So under 50, you're good. If you're over 50, it's not full odds anymore. So have fun with the KO method. I know a lot of people have really good success. It's miserable for them, but it's the shiny hunting method. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I don't know what else to tell you. Just, you just pick a route, pick a Pokemon, keep KOing it until you find the shiny and that's that's really it man it's that's that's literally the method so it's similar to dex nav but i feel in the grand scheme it's not as effective because of that whole stupid three percent chance but at the same token everyone always said wow shinies are getting so easy to catch maybe pokemon did this three percent chance on purpose even though it could be a bug people say it's a bug but i personally believe they did this on purpose because they wanted things to be challenging maybe i don't know let's move on to the good method that pretty much most people will probably want to do which is breeding for shiny pokemon dude yeah Let's go, dude! Man, that thing is... That thing is... Oh! Oh! That's it! Boy or girl? Boy or girl? Who? Oh, I got... I have... Hold up, hold up, hold up. I gotta finish this raid, boys. It's the last one. Nintendo Switch Lite Giveaway. Click the link, fill out the form, so you can enter for a chance to win. Oh my god! What the fuck was that? Dude, it was like purple. What? Run that back, please. Hello? So in Pokemon Sword and Shield, there are two Pokemon nurseries or Pokemon daycares. Uh, this one we are currently at is in the wild area, which is the bridge field. So I can just show you guys, even though I'm right there, this is where it's at. So if you look back at your map, it's right next to uh, Monostoke. So you see this, you just go kind of northeast. So you'd go down over here, you'd cross the bridge, and then boom, you're here. It's kind of tucked away in the corner. So, but once you... Or here, this is the nursery. You typically, honestly, would just spin in circles, and this was this is how you'd probably hatch, you know, a Pokemon egg. And then you would talk to the, you know, the lady, get more eggs, and you just spin in circles, la di da di da. Typically, I don't like to do, use the wild area because I feel like there's just random Pokemon encounters, and if you're online, there's lag, and it's just it's always personal preference, but that is what you would do, right? I typically just stay on route five this pokemon nursery i like the most uh, but to actually do shiny pokemon breeding aka the masuda method you have to have these pokemon in order to do the job 
So it doesn't matter what Pokemon you want to get shiny, it just matters that you have the right tools for it. So I have a Slowpoke. This is the new uh, Galarian Slowpoke that it just got recently added uh, because of an update in, you know, because we're getting the new DLC later this year. So my current shiny hunt is a Slowpoke. I'm trying to get three of them in total. So my Slowpoke, as you can see right here, this is it. It is an English Slowpoke. This Ditto is Japanese. You can tell by the JPN next to Ditto's name. Also, Ditto's name is in, also in Japanese. So, it doesn't matter what language Ditto is in. It just matters that it's not English. So, if you look at your Ditto and there's no like foreign language box, then you have an English Ditto. You're not doing Masuda method. Prime example, if I can find one of my extra Dittos... This is what you do not want. You do not want a ditto that is English. And you see how there's no box saying whatever language it is? This is not Masuda method. This is Masuda method. You want an English Pokemon with a different language Pokemon. And typically ditto is the best Pokemon to breed with because of the fact that ditto breeds pretty much with everything. So always use a Japanese ditto if you have one. If you need one, I personally go out of my way. I played a game in Japanese just so I can do raids on my Japanese account so I can catch Japanese dittos so I can give them away. Uh, I do that on my live stream. I do not take requests on YouTube videos. Just come to a live stream. I have a whole process of how I do it. Um, it's it, it takes a lot of time because I only have two switches and it's, it's a whole process. But if you're looking for a Japanese Ditto, uh, I'm your guy. Uh, if I'm doing the, the Ditto giveaways, it's really easy to know when I'm doing it because I make it very publicly known on Twitter and YouTube and just you, you will know. Um, but that is something I do from time to time on my Twitch streams. Uh, but this is Masuda Method. English Pokemon with a Japanese Pokemon. You put it in the daycare. You keep getting eggs. You keep hatching Pokemon until you get the shiny. That's it. So, Slowpoke, select it. Japanese Ditto, select it. Great. They're both in the daycare. They are there. Awesome. Oh, dude, this, making this guide is just, there's so much information. Just even to make a simplistic guide, because I, I don't like to just make it super cookie cutter, because if I don't talk about enough, then people will get confused. But see... I have both Pokemon in the daycare. She's crossing her arms, which indicates that, hey, you have a Pokemon egg. Go talk to her. Go pick up the egg. So all you would need to do is then hatch the eggs, which would mean just walk around. So obviously the best way is get on your bike and just go in circles or just, you know, go up and down the route. Um, the best thing to have is a Pokemon with flame body, particularly Chandelure or any Pokemon that's, you know, Litwick or... Lamp Pin or Chandelure, as long as the ability says Flame Body and they're at the front of your party, it makes your life so much easier. Uh, I gotta see if I have a Steam Engine Pokemon uh, somewhere. I know I do. Maybe not in this game, I don't know. But I just typically just use Chandelure. Yeah, you also can use Colossal. Steam Engine does the same effect as Flame Body. So there's your options. But I typically just use Chandelure because I just do. Like, I literally got my Flame Body Pokemon. I was like, all right, that's my Pokemon I'm going to use for <laughs> breeding shinies. And that's just what I've been doing since I've been shiny hunting, you know, by breeding. And that's that's it. Um, like I said earlier in the video, there are shiny locks for certain Pokemon. I have not bred a shiny Charmander as I'm making this video. But like I said, uh, there is proof that I have all the starters. Here is Score Bunny. There is Sobble. And there is Garuki. So you can get them from breeding. You just have to, you know, put them in the daycare, do the Masuda method, and then just keep hatching eggs to get the shiny. If you do not do Masuda method, then it would still, it would be a full odds. It'd be one out of 4,096. So if I was to breed Slowpoke with that Ditto that I showed you earlier, wherever he's at, where did the ditto go? So if I was to breed my Slowpoke with this ditto, it'd be a full odd shiny hunt because there's there's no multiplier. So if you're into full odds breeding, by all means. Again, this is not this is not a 
in-depth tutorial of every aspect of breeding Pokemon. That's a whole other topic that I don't want to talk about because I don't breed competitive Pokemon anymore. It's not my thing. I just care about breeding for shinies these days. Um, but yeah, so if you want to do full odds, you would just, you know, pick a Pokemon and then of like of, that's English and you would breed it with an English ditto. That would be full odds. If you want Masuda method, again, you would need a Pokemon and then it you would have to have it have some type of different language box in the description. You put them both in the daycare, you keep getting eggs, you keep hatching them until you get a shiny and that's it. That wraps that up because that's that's it the next on the list is max raid battle shinies that's the one nice thing about oh my god yes a regular raid battle ta-da Yeet! It looks so cool! That blends in so much with the Dynamax aura, dude. You can't even tell the thing is shiny, man. You really can't. <laughs> it blends too much with the <laughs> with the Dynamax color. <laughs> shiny Pangoro. Thanks to AKA Snuggy, my homie, hooking it up. So for Max Raid Battle Shiny Pokemon, uh, this is probably going to be the least amount of time I spend talking about it, but uh, to get a legit Shiny from a raid, uh, either it's like that beam over there, which is naturally generated because of how just the day cycle works in Sword and Shield. Um, so, you know, every day or when you... It's either every day the, the spawns shift or you complete all the raids that are available and then new ones show up, right? Uh, in this example, I'm just going to show you that, hey, there's this this one I used with the wishing piece. I want to see if I can find a shiny. So the fastest way would just be to use a wishing piece on a random den, whichever one you want, and see what happens. So obviously the game is saved every time you use a wishing piece. So you would just go right into the battle uh, and see if you found a shiny. And if you did not find a shiny, well, then you just didn't find a shiny. Uh, you're more than likely going to be invited to a shiny Pokemon raid uh, because people uh, really like using the exploit to find shiny Pokemon and then they host the raid online because right then and there, that is when the shiny would, would show up. It shows up literally at the beginning of the battle and you know right away that it's shiny, right? But obviously we did not get a shiny, so yeah. So that's the fastest way to get out of that raid battle is by just closing your game so typically, if you were to legit shiny hunt for raid battle Pokemon, you would just do it offline first. And then once you found a shiny den, um, then you could like host it for your friends. That's why so many people do the exploit because, you know, it's fun to do and there's a there's a way to do it. I'm not explaining that exploit because enough people have done it and I personally don't want to put the time and effort to doing it because... I'd rather shiny hunt other ways. I don't know. I'd rather be invited to a shiny raid than waste my whole day or more trying to find a shiny den by using the exploit. I'd rather just play the game. That's just me. Everyone's different. I'm not throwing shade at anybody who's using the raid exploit. It's just I personally don't want to put the hours upon hours just trying to find a max raid shiny Pokemon. So... Just another example, if I wanted this den to possibly be shiny, it has to be brand new. So every time you generate a, a new den with a wishing piece, this is when the shiny is determined. Or like I said earlier, the one over there, that one is naturally like generated because of, you know, it's just there when I open the game. But when you want to do it more efficiently, you would use wishing pieces because you just want to constantly nonstop go for whatever Pokemon you want. Um, and yeah, this is, this is the legit way to how to shiny hunt. You need a lot of wishing pieces and then it's a lot of just checking and then, you know, closing and then reopening. And like, that's literally what you gotta do if you want to do it all legit. And, uh, it's time consuming as heck either way, even with the exploit, it does make it faster, but you also need to know a ton more stuff to do all the prep work for the exploit. So 
at the end of the day, people feel a certain way about raid shiny Pokemon just in general, even if it is legit. So, but I did want to mention it in the video. Of course, you guys will see proof that I've joined a shiny raid and have found shiny Pokemon before. If you before watching this video, you may have seen me upload a video where I've done a shiny raid and someone invited me. And yeah, so that's pretty much it for raid shiny Pokemon. I'm assuming the shiny odds is just full odds. It's one out of 4096, but shiny Pokemon raids are pretty, I'd say not pretty common, but common in general because of there's a lot of people that stream uh shiny raid dens and they host the raids and they invite people they invite viewers like it's there's discord communities all for it i've seen it all over people come together just for this concept because it's fun it's interesting but i personally just do not i don't want to waste my whole day looking for a shiny den it's a long process and i'd rather just do the other shiny hunting methods that are available in in this game so that is uh, how to get shiny Pokemon in max raid battles. So uh, here we are recording really quick uh, because of the fact uh, that uh, he literally just kind of sprung this on me right as I ended my stream. So I was like, okay, let's just uh, <laughs> let's let's do this real quick and see what's up. But yes, yeah, so it's uh, pretty much just, we're just just here, man. So it's kind of like a one and done thing. So if I don't catch it, uh, we're just kind of SOL. So yeah, if you guys uh, like when we do some shiny raids, let me know, man. And of course, you know, give all the support to my boy Snuggy. I'm just waiting on him to do the sub. But yeah, I'm, this is just really funny. We, we would have done this on stream if I had like known I was literally was ending my stream. And then he was just like, yo, he's like, bro, I'm like, come on, got another raid. Let's get it going. Oh my gosh, dude. Bro, that looks so amazing, bro. We are flexing right now with our Dreadnought. <laughs> we were almost done, my friends. We were almost done, but I had to do some reshoots for this video because I wanted to make sure everything was A-OK. -okay. So, it's a good thing uh, G Fuel now has a coffee flavor. If you do not know, G Fuel is an energy drink. It's the thing over there that's 10% off with my code SMK. But let us talk about how to get the shiny charm. To get the shiny charm in the game, you need a full Pokedex. So you see how it says caught and seen, right? It needs to say 400 caught. It doesn't matter if you catch it yourself, if people trade it to you in some way, shape, or form. You just need it to say that 400 400 because when you catch it it registers a scene so if your pokedex says that well then you're good you are pretty much done right so then what you need to do is you need to go to a little place called the sir chester right here i'm already there but we're gonna fly there and i'm gonna give you an in-depth tutorial of where you need to run and go so that you can actually pick up your shiny charm Again, Shiny Charm is not an op it's an optional thing. You do not need this uh, in order to start your Shiny Hunting Adventures. Uh, some people prefer not to have it, which is very fair. You don't need it. This is just for the people that want it, right? So you got to go all the way down here. <clears throat> and it's too early in the morning to be doing reshoots. But anyways, so you got to go to this guy right here, right? And you gotta talk to him, okay? I've already done it. So he's, he's, he's not going to give me anything, right? He's just going to show me the certificate. Right, which is cool. But, so I made a clip I was recording on my Switch. This this little button right here, you can hold it down for videos, and you can click it for pictures or screenshots. So I've already done this. I've talked to him before. This was like like a month ago. And I just, if you had to use it in a video, but here we are, so now I actually have the clip. So yeah, so you just talk to the guy once your Pokedex is completed, and boom, boom, there's your shiny charm. So to wrap up this video, I wanted to do uh, like a demonstration uh, to show you guys the difference in shiny Pokemon animations. There are two in this game. There's one for stars and there is a square animation, which is like the new one. Uh, and depending on the method you do, whether it's random encounters, raid battles, breeding and fossil hunting, you'll get more likely to have stars versus squares or squares versus stars. So if you're interested to know what the chances are, I, I literally will have a list of every method and the odds of getting a star shiny animation or a square shiny animation. 
Uh, is one better than the other? Uh, no, because basically they're, it's just an animation. And then number two, it just makes you want to find every single Pokemon with both animations. So you would, in, in essence, need two shinies, but they'd have to be different animations to literally have them all in Sword and Shield. But I digress. Let me just show you guys what I mean about squares versus stars. So let's just do some encounters here just to demonstrate what I'm talking about if you're 100% new to this. So McQueen is a square shiny. This is actually one of my full ads of Grubbin that I evolved up to a Charger Bug. So that would be an example of a square shiny, which I found in the wild, right? Hence why it was square, because it was a wild Pokemon. Whereas Ninetales, I got from a raid. And can we all just talk about seeing Ninetales in beautiful HD? It's quite nice. I like it very much. Hey, look, Rookity. See? Ninetales. And it's a star shiny. That's it. That's all it is. There's, there's nothing to it. It's just you have one shiny animation over the other. And that's it. So... They don't change the, it doesn't change the, the coloring of the shiny. It doesn't do anything like that. It's just literally you have a shiny and it's either got a star or it's got a square. That's it. So I know this video was super long and it was just a lot of information. Uh, but I wanted to make a shiny hunting guide forever. But seeing as I wanted to get, you know, more information and stuff together. And then I was just like, you know what? I'm just so sick of not having a shiny hunting tutorial. Because I know people would like that from myself. Uh, but huge shout outs to Shiny Collector, Hoodlum Callan, and Austin John Plays. Uh, all three of those guys um, had examples of each things I was pointing out in this video. Especially Austin John's Plays because he has done a lot of stuff about the shiny uh, Pokemon Den stuff for raid battling. So he's, he's made like multiple videos on that stuff. Which I just don't personally want to do. In the sense of like I didn't want to try and figure out that nonsense. But he's like made plenty of videos talking about it. So that's why I wanted to recommend you guys to those three uh, awesome youtubers so that you guys can find the information that you're looking for I'm just here to put everything that I know all in one video so that if anyone has questions about shiny hunting while I'm streaming I'm like hey watch this video um, but since I didn't have a couple things for this video I wanted to you know direct you guys to the places you would want to you know see proof or just if you wanted more information you can go to those guys for it so Hopefully this whole video has somehow helped you with your shiny hunting experience. Thank you so much for just uh, sticking with me for so long. But I'm going to go back to shiny hunting or playing whatever video game I'm super invested in at the time. But uh, thank you again for watching. I hope this helped. And this is one of the longest shiny hunting tutorials I've ever made. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe in the future I'll do this again. Uh, we'll see. But uh, that is everything you need to know about shiny hunting in Pokemon Sword, and in Pokemon Shield. I'm SMK. You can always call me Steven. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time in the next video or live stream in the future. Bye-bye.